Yeah, one of the biggest things that we see from a lot of people, you know, like they'll come for their initial bike fit here and we'll fit them with a, a road bike and I'll say, okay, well, let's get some clip-ons on and they go on the clip-ons and generally speaking, everybody loves this ride. You get like this speed. You probably get like two mile an hour just from a set of clip-ons. Then it's like time trial bike is obviously going to be the next thing, isn't it? And what bike do I buy? That's the hardest one. And the amount of people that email me asking around like, what, what frame size do I buy? And this is like endless, so many out there now. One bike might fit in one manufacturer, might not fit in a, another one. Like a lot of bikes nowadays, is they've got, you know, like really short top tubes, time trial bike. And then you just imagine your road bike's probably got like a, a really long top tube. Trying to get a bike that fits you, that's really important. A lot of the manufacturers now are actually putting like calculators around like your size. But if you've got like a really long wingspan, no one's calculating for that. But it's something that we can obviously help you with. But I would definitely say, what is the fastest bike out there? It's the most adaptable one to fit your body shape into it. You know, like we all want aero data, don't we? But it's the configuration of athlete and bike that's important nowadays. So, you know, like if you're getting fitted to this bike, you want it to be adaptable. And that's where we are restrictive around like a lot of the new front ends that are coming out. They're integrated into the bike, but what you generally seeing is that they're too short for most people, especially like for triathletes, because a lot of them, they'll struggle with like shoulder mobility and rotation. You know, like they'll come out of the swim and they've got like these burning shoulders. And, uh, and they're on like these really short bikes and then they can't, they can't get aero. But ideally, you are gonna gain just going from your road bike to your time trial bike. And there's parameters that you've also got to think about, like, I don't know, say you look at your road bike, the layback of the saddle is going to be a lot more. It might be, depending on who's fitted it, it could be between like five and nine centimetres behind like the bottom bracket. And the reach is going to be totally different. But generally speaking, for most people, then the, the setback of the saddle is going to be anywhere between, you know, it depends if you pull forwards quite a lot on the saddle. Some people are even forward of the bottom bracket. It's going to be roughly around like five centimetres behind like the BB. Majority of people we see here, it's probably like two to three centimetres behind like the bottom bracket. But then how you distribute that weight is different again. Do you know what I mean? So if you can imagine like you brought this amazing new bike, it looks amazing. But if you kind of, you can't get the distribution of the weight, it's going to affect like the control of how that bike actually rides. So you imagine it's like really short versus, you know, quite long on the front. It's a different configuration. And that's what affects some people, you know, like when we talk about wheels as well, then if this distribution of weight is totally wrong, it affects the, the handling of it. Getting the right time trial bike is critical really. So don't always go on like the manufacturer that you generally love, go on the one that you think, okay, I can adapt to that one. If you want to go quicker, like I'd always say start off on like a road bike, do you know what I mean? Like you haven't got to go and just go and spend like uh, all these thousands of pounds on like a, a time trial bike. I think it's generally, you know, like, once you want to start to see that improvement in speed and you've, you know, like you've got the control over the bike, that's the next phase to go to really. A lot of people, and I see quite a few of these that, uh, you know, you are, they're just going to enter an Ironman and they're just going to a bike and, uh, shop and just buy like a time trial bike. <laughs> We've no clue how it's going to handle. So, but I definitely say that ideally running the two bikes is, is a good thing to have.